Hey guys, it's Luke Yon, and today I am going to be doing my February wrap-up. I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in February. I read 14 books in February. Um, some of them were novellas. Um, and yeah, uh, let's just get on into the video, because I have nothing else to say before we start. So, since February is the love month, the month of Valentine's Day, I decided to celebrate my loneliness by reading Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon as my first book of the month. This book is about a girl named Evie who has basically sworn off romance after this big thing happened in her family with her mother and father, and she's kind of like doesn't believe in romance anymore or dating. And then she ends up signing up for this, like, dance class, and she meets a boy named X there, and he kind of makes her reevaluate her kind of sanction on romance, if you will. So I enjoyed this book. I don't know why. I was like, I don't feel like I'm going to enjoy this book. Like, I don't own this book, which is why I have a picture here. And I was like, eh, I'm just going to read this because it's like a short and quick book, but I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it that much. But I actually really ended up liking it, and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I thought the romance was really freaking cute, and I thought the book was, like, really quick and easy to get through. It was only, like, 300 pages, and the chapters were short, and I liked that there was, like, a little bit of, like, a little hint of magic in it. I'm not going to spoil that for you, but that was really interesting and unexpected because I didn't know that that was going to be in the book. And yeah, I just thought it was a pretty solid romance. I thought it was cute, and I would probably say that this is my favorite Nicola Yoon book? I don't know, because I really did like The Sun is Also a Star. I read everything, everything so long ago that I don't even remember it that much. But I really enjoyed The Sun is Also a Star, and I really enjoyed this one. And I think, honestly, this one is probably... Like, I probably enjoyed this one more than The Sun is Also a Star. I don't know why. It was just... Maybe I was in the right mood for it, but I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters, I thought the writing was interesting, and the book was really engaging. And it's good if you just want to read something to turn your brain off. There is a little bit of, like, emotion into it, because there's, like, you know, some sad stuff that happens, but it's not, like, melancholy or anything. It's, like, a good balance between, like, light, light-hearted fun stuff and then a little bit of deeper undertones. Then I randomly decided to reread a book. I actually had no plans to reread this book. But I just decided to on a whim, and that book was Flame in the Mist by Renee Othia. I read this book a long time ago in 2018, and I was kind of like, I want to get some books off my shelf that I haven't read yet. And I saw the sequel to this book, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and I was like, I really want to read this that book. Should I just go into it without rereading this one? And I tried to read a recap of this book, but I was like, there's no way I'm going to enjoy Smoke in the Sun if I don't actually reread this book. Um, so I decided to, and I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I remembered liking it, but I was like, it's been, like, basically three years, or basically four years since I read it, because I read it in May of 2018, so three years and nine months, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it as much the second time around, because I just felt like I had such a disconnect from it, but I read it and I really, really enjoyed it the second time around as well. I just really like Renee Othia's writing. I feel like... She probably has some of my favorite writing in YA, just like in general. I think the way that she writes, it's like so captivating and I can just instantly picture the scenes. Like I never feel like I'm lost, I always feel like I'm there. And that's like a rare thing for an author to do. Like I feel like it's just like, it's not to me overly descriptive to the point where you feel like you're being like forced to see what she's, what the author is seeing, but it's like enough where you can get the picture that they're trying to paint, but you can also kind of, like, embellish it where you want to, if that makes any sense. And I really liked the main character, Mariko. Oh, I totally forgot to explain what this book is about. Basically, it is about a girl named Mariko who is part of, like, a noble family in feudal Japan. And she is on her way to marry the prince when her convoy is attacked and she's the only survivor. She ends up dressing up as a man and joining the Black Clan, which she believes and, like, were the people that were out to kill her and were the ones that attacked her. And she meets a boy named Okami there, and there's some drama that goes on. Um, this book doesn't have much of a plot until, like, the last hundred pages, but I honestly just really liked reading about the characters and just enjoying Renee Othia's very, like, immersive writing. And I just had a really good old time rereading this book, and I'm really happy that I got around to it. 
and got around to the sequel, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So yeah, I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars, and overall, I'm definitely happy that I got around to, you know, reading this again, because I thought I didn't really like this series, but I think it's a really, really solid duology. If you want to read, like, historical stuff that, like, has to do with a little bit of Japanese history, I loved that aspect as well, definitely read Flame in the Mist if you have a chance. Then, before jumping into the sequel, I read, actually reread, This Woman Kingdom by Taha Mafi. I'm not gonna talk about this book right now. I have an entire, like, half hour plus reading vlog, spoiler filled reading vlog of this book, but I loved it. Five out of five stars. It was great reading it. And that vlog is in the description box below. The next two books that I read were actually novellas, and they were Okami and Yumi, which are two novellas that take place between Flame in the Mist and Smoke in the Sun. I just wanted to reread these because I was like, I like these two characters and I want to reread these, or I want to read these before getting into the sequel. They were fine. I don't think I even rated them. They were like 15 pages each, so they were like really, really short stories, but they were free, so I can't really complain. I think they were definitely solid short stories, but I don't think you like really need to read them before going into Smoke in the Sun. Speaking of which, the next book that I read was Smoke in the Sun by Renee Othia. I can't remember if I gave this 3.75 or 4 stars. Well, let me check. Hold on. Okay, yeah, I gave this book like a 3.5, 3.75. I kind of thought so. Um, but I ended up enjoying this book. I didn't like it as much as Flame in the Mist, but, you know, I still really liked Renee Othia's writing, obviously. I did still like the characters and the setting was still, like, really intriguing. But this one was just, I know a lot of people said Flame in the Mist was really slow, I didn't feel it was that slow, but this one I definitely felt the kind of like pacing, I, I felt like the pacing was kind of just off, I felt like the story was kind of just, I felt like I was wading through mud sometimes, it was just like very slow and there were a lot of like new perspectives, like mo there were some other perspectives aside from Mariko's in Flame in the Mist, but in this book I feel like we got perspectives of every single character, which I really don't think we needed, and a lot of this book we just spend time like chilling in a castle, and I honestly think that it could have been either way shorter, or we could have just had like a single, like a standalone book if you just made this one like 500 pages. Like I honestly think, actually no, if this was like a 550 page standalone, you could maybe trim some of the things from this book and then just add like, like condense this into 150 pages and add it to the end of this. Um, cause I enjoy, like overall I enjoyed this book for what it was, but I don't think like it was that great. Like do you ever read a book and you're like, for what this was, I enjoyed it, but if I were to, like, write this story, I wouldn't write it this way. That's kind of how I feel, so, like, as a book, it's a 3.5 or 3.75, but I think, like, if I were to be the author of this series, I would have just condensed this, like, by at least half, and then just add it into Flame the Mist, um, or just have a shorter second book. I don't know, but I enjoyed this book. Again, I still really liked the characters, the setting was interesting, and I did overall like the ending of the story, and um, I did eventually get used to all the perspectives, and it did come together a lot in the last like 100 pages, so I did enjoy that. I did think the ending was a little bit abrupt, but like again, overall I think it was like a solid conclusion to the story, and I think overall this is a pretty solid duology, and I would definitely recommend picking it up. Then I did another reread. I reread The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. I just decided to reread this because I was like, it's been a while since I read this, and I feel like reading it again, I might have different thoughts. Um, I didn't have different thoughts. I felt the same way the second time around as I did the first time around. The first, like, 200, 250 pages of this book are 5 out of 5 stars. The last 100, 150 pages, I can't, no, the last 50 to 100 pages were kind of just, like, a little bit downhill. This book, I keep forgetting to mention, to talk about what these books are about, but anyway, this book follows Nanerol Mozart, who is the equally talented sister to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This book takes place in the, like, mid to late 1700s, and Nanerol has, like, wants to be a composer just like her brother, but due to her being a woman in the 18th century, she cannot compose past the age of 18, 
and so she basically makes a wish to be remembered forever and this princeling from a mythical kingdom that the Mozart uh, siblings actually like created um or like kind of like they it is a historical fact that they did like create this fantasy world called the kingdom of back um basically this princeling from there shows up and offers to give her what she wants if she can fulfill these tasks or if he can if she can fulfill this bargain and do like these tasks for him in the kingdom. So I really enjoyed like the magical realism aspects of this book for the first like 250 pages. I love how it was like weaving in and out and we got a lot of historical stuff and I loved the writing from this book. I think this is Marie Lu's best prose by far. But in the last like 50 to 100 pages, we just got like a really fantasy-ish. Like we spent a lot of time in the kingdom and I feel like the historical stuff kind of like fell by the wayside. So. Overall, like, I still really enjoyed this book, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, but I think if we had just gotten more historical stuff, or if the Kingdom stuff was just more of a backdrop, I would have enjoyed it way more, um, and probably give it a 5 out of 5 stars. But still, the writing was amazing, I loved Nero as a character, and I did overall like the historical stuff and the fantasy stuff, but I think together it didn't work. 100% of the time. Then I read another romance book, which was The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. This book follows a woman named Nick who is proposed to by her boyfriend during a basketball game, or not basketball game, a baseball game, and she basically rejects him, like, live on the, what is it called? I always forget what it's called. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and he, she liked to get, they're basically this other guy who's there with his sister and he sees what's happening to Nick because her boyfriend is like freaking out and he basically like comes over and saves her and like gets her out of the situation and it's a romance book, they end up getting together. I gave this book like 2.5 out of 5 stars, I really did not enjoy it that much. Um, I've actually, I've read another Jasmine Guillory book since reading this and I'm currently reading another one. But, um, this one was just not great. Like, I feel like the writing was very bland and just, like, bare minimum. You know, like, bare minimum Twitter? I felt like that was what Jasmine Guillory's writing was. It was just very basic. There was nothing really, like, keeping me onto the story. I felt like I had to force myself to read the book. And though I liked the characters and I did like the book for, like, the first hundred-ish pages, I felt like once the couple, actually maybe less than that, once the couple actually got together it was just like boring relationship drama that I didn't really care about and like after a certain point I just kind of had to like force myself to read through the chapters and I was like reading other books like while I was reading this one just because I like needed palate cleansers while I was getting through that book. It's not even very long, it's not even 300 pages, but I just didn't really enjoy it. But I am happy to report that I have enjoyed some of Jasmine Guillory's other books more than this one, so maybe this was just a fluke, but whatever. I saw the cover, I was like, sure, I could just read this really quickly, and I did end up reading it fast, but it was just, like, not my favorite, personally. I think the representation was great, and all that sort of stuff, but it just wasn't really my cup of tea, personally, but I know a lot of people really enjoy this book, so to each their own, I suppose. After that, I read Legend by Marie Lu. This is Marie Lu's first book, and it is a dystopian novel that follows two main characters, Day and June. Actually, I'm just gonna read you <laughs> the synopsis that's in here, because I feel like it does a way better job of encapsulating what this book is about than I just did. So it says, from different worlds, June and Day have no reason to cross paths, until June's brother is murdered and Day becomes the prime suspect. In a shocking turn of events, the two uncover what has really brought them together, and the sinister lengths to which their country will go to to keep its secrets. So, they basically end up, like, coming together and joining up and realizing that their country is corrupt. It's a dystopian book, you can probably predict what happens. I ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars. I can definitely tell this was Marie Lu's debut novel. I've read a ton of her other books. Um, I've read every single one of her books besides this series and I've owned this book for like a million years, so I just decided to like read it on a whim. And I did actually read like the first hundred pages of this book a couple of years ago, I think maybe like 2019. 
Um, and then I just never got around to finishing it, but this time I actually read it. It took me, like, way longer to read this book than I expected to. It's, like, 300 pages, but it took me, like, five days to read. I don't know why, but, you know, it was fine. Like, I don't hate this book, obviously. I mean, I gave it three stars, but I thought, like, the character work was good. That was probably my favorite part, just, like, reading about the two characters and how different they are, and you can really tell who, how different they are just from like reading their perspectives and I really liked both of them and I think by the end like I really liked how their characters like arced in this book but I'm also excited to see where it goes from here and all that stuff. Marie Lu's writing was like good, not as great as like her other books writing have been, that made no sense, but you know her writing was good. I think the plot was, like, engaging enough. It wasn't, like, my cup of tea, because I just don't really care about dystopian books anymore. But I was like, whatever, let me just read this, because it had been on my shelf and, like, whatever, and I, like... So I do like some dystopian books, but this one was just, like, okay. Um, I am excited to read the next books in the series. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to them, because, again, I did just feel kind of, like, mad about this book. But I did like some of the twists in this book, to be honest, and again, I really liked the characters, so I am interested to see how the series continues, but I'm not, like, fiending to find out what happens. Then the next three books that I read were all by Betty White, so I read Betty and Friends was the first one that I read, and it was, like, My Life at the Zoo. This is basically just a compilation of different, uh, animals that Betty White has encountered over the years, and it has pictures and some information about each one. It was really cute. I didn't write any of these books because I don't really like writing nonfiction, but I love Betty White. She is like my favorite celebrity and I was heartbroken after she passed away, but um, I felt like this was like a good way to honor her memory and all that sort of stuff. So I read this book. I really enjoyed it. The next one that I read was Here We Go Again, which is her first, or I, it's not her first memoir, but her first of her two more, most popular ones. And this one is, like, the start of her career to, like, the mid-90s, I think. Um, and this one was good as well. It's, like, I didn't love it as much as the next one that I'm going to talk about. But, because I really wanted to listen to the audiobook, but the audiobook for this book is abridged, which is, like, so frustrating. Um, so I had to, like, actually read the book, which I feel like wasn't as fun. I could definitely see Betty White's, like, or hear Betty White's voice or see her personality kind of on the page. But it just wasn't the same, I feel like, listening to it would have been way better because I really like listening to memoirs whenever I can if I'm reading one. Um, but it was still interesting. I liked reading about her life and all that sort of stuff. Um, I love the Golden Girls. I love like some a, a lot of the other things that she's done. Um, and I just love her as a person, so it was really fun to read this nonetheless. And then we have my favorite of the three, which is uh, If You Ask Me and Of Course You Won't, which is her most recent book. Or actually, I think Betty and Friends, the zoo one, came out afterwards, but whatever. Um, this is definitely her most popular one. She won a Grammy for the audiobook, which I is the one that I, which is how I consumed this book. I would listen to the audiobook, and I really loved hearing this story. She read it herself, so it was kind of like getting the full effect of the story. And I really enjoyed it. This talks about, like, it picks up where her last memoir ended off, so like late 90s and then through to like 2012 I think it is. Um, and we learn about like Hot in Cleveland and The Proposal, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, and um, You Again, which is another one of my favorite movies, and it was kind of like her more recent career. So I really loved this one. This isn't definitely my favorite one. And if you have the chance, definitely listen to the audiobook. It was great. And then the last two books that I read this month were part of the same series. The first one was House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. So I read the first two books in the Crescent City series. This book was a reread for me. I read it in March, or yeah, March of 2020. Haha, <laughs> what a month that was. Um, and I did talk about this in one of my wrap-ups from that time. So you can watch that if you want, like, more of my thoughts, but I enjoyed this on reread. I think I enjoyed it more the second time around, because I kind of knew what I was expecting and all that sort of stuff. I thought it was fun. I really do like the characters in this series. I like Sarah J. Mass's writing. I did really like the setting in this book. We'll talk about my feelings on the setting in, in the second book more. Uh, like, I don't know. I feel like in this book, the setting was really interesting and lush and vast. In the second book, it kind of fell a little bit flat for me, but... 
whatever, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, I really liked the characters in this one, I really liked the writing, um, I thought the plot was really interesting and engaging. It was definitely too long for me, I think this book could have easily been 600 pages, but I think overall it was a pretty solid book and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. It's definitely like a really solid Sarah J Mass book. Um, what isn't a really solid Sarah J Mass book is House of Sky and Breath, which is the sequel. I have an entire 50-something minute review of this book, which goes to my spoiler thoughts, but originally I gave this a 4, like, right after I finished it, but upon reflection, it's more of like a 3.5, 3.75. I really didn't start liking this book until, like, page 600 out of 800. So, like, I don't think that is, like, a great ratio, like, not liking 600 pages of this book, but liking 200, like, I don't think that is, like, a great thing. Um, so, anyway, I mean, I didn't hate the first 600 pages, it was just kind of, like, boring, but anyway, regardless, I thought this was okay, definitely not as good as the first one, in my opinion, and not a great book, like, overall. Like, it was fine, but it wasn't anything amazing. You can see more of my thoughts in that, like, a million hour long <laughs> reading vlog though. But yeah, that is it for this video and this wrap up. I feel like I was talking at the speed of light there. We got through this pretty quickly. I easily could have spent like 40 minutes <laughs> filming this video. But that is it for this video. I would love to know what books you read in February. If you've read any of the books that I read in February, I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, if you want to follow me on any of my social media things, <laughs> all my links are in the description box below. Um, and yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!